Well, it's all according to definition. When I say you're the easiest target, I'm talking about something where an argument can be made that it's not justified. I'm not, listen, if a criminal walks out here, okay, you're a criminal. Us calling you a criminal, that doesn't make you a target. That makes it, we're stating fact. You understand what I'm saying? Alex Rodriguez is a performance enhancing drug user. You understand who swindled okay. the New York Yankees out of $300 million? Uh -oh. You understand? Okay. You got Ryan Braun, who sat up there, had $102 million at least waiting for him with his new contract, and sat out there and tried to dime out and, and, and paint some poor urine sample collector as a villain who okay. probably wasn't making $70,000 a year. That is, that, that's a statement of fact. Whereas with LeBron, you're sitting back and saying, wait a minute, this is the greatest player in the world. The, the, the man has been in the league for more than 11 years. His biggest crime, ladies and gentlemen, never in the police blotters, never any kind of okay. negativity whatsoever. The biggest thing that LeBron James ever did negatively was the decision. That's all we have. Yet you would think that this guy is just, the, uh, depending on who you ask, on which day you ask them, He's the worst dude on the planet. Oh, he's a crybaby. He's fake. Hey, who he's says funny. that? I'm just who? Saying, who no, says no, that? No, no, I'm saying. Yes, you are right in terms of social media. Thank but you. you. Also, well, wait a minute. But social media also ignites those to jump up the second he does something wrong. He has the cramps the other day. Even though Chris Boussard was talking to you, he was really talking about a lot of people out there when he said... People who are getting on LeBron now have been waiting the last couple of years to do this. They wanted a, they wanted an encore performance from his performance against Dallas in the finals. They wanted that to happen again so they could get on him, get on him, get on him. But what are you going to say when he wins back-to-back -back league MVP honors and world championships? There was nothing to say, and then the cramps come up, and all of a sudden, that's an excuse for everybody to come out. It was cramps. It was one game. You would have thought he lost the NBA finals. It, it was because of the way he reacted to having cramps. He was such a, if I can, drama king. It, it was he, made, he was so melodramatic about it. Skip. Oh, take me out, coach, and then I got to get carried out. Skip. No, but, but, Jordan doesn't do that. Wait Kobe minute, doesn't wait do that. You're asking for it if you're the what, best what, what, player what, in basketball. What I'm saying to you is that even if even if your point is correct, and I don't believe it is, the point that I'm trying to make to you is that it was one game, one moment. It's it, but people were treating it as if it defined who he was as a player. He's the best player in the world. It's one game. You know that the Heat, 13 consecutive times now, they have come back after losing a playoff awesome. game. And, 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 awesome and, 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 and still, we act as if he lost the damn finals. Agreed. It was one game. Agree with Stephen A. I mean, I think the most amazing statistic about this entire Heat team, and it's completely because of LeBron, 16 consecutive series. They played 16 series. 16 times they've won a road game. That's amazing. That's an absolutely incredible uh, number. And you don't do that unless you can handle pressure, unless you can handle things. And I agree with you, Skip. LeBron wanted everybody to know that he wasn't 100%, but he also wasn't 100%. He was not 100%, and I never questioned that part. Right. I mean, he obviously did cramp. All right, let's go to a deeper level here. Let's play a soundbite that I heard that LeBron gave to, who was it, was it to Doris after yes. the game? Doris Burke sure. on ABC, in which he mentioned God. And I've not, to my memory, heard LeBron mention God publicly like this. Could we hear this quickly? LeBron, early on in this game, you were aggressive attacking the paint, then you went perimeter. What dictates your decision making there? Just play, live with the results. If I play hard, uh, I believe that, uh, the man above is going to protect me. And I just try to put my teammates, myself, in position to succeed. And I live with the results after that. Okay, so if I play hard, said LeBron James, I believe the man above will protect me. Have you heard God references in your one-on-ones your -on with LeBron? It, it's come and gone over the years. Okay. Um, it's hard for me to say exactly how he is personally. Um, when he first came into the league, it was something that he definitely embraced. He definitely has gone away from that recently. But I think something about the playoffs, he gets much more insular okay. when the playoffs come around. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's when he maybe turns to that, look, looks for that support so, more. Somebody told me something, um, you know, because obviously there was a time when, you know, when he performed badly in the fourth quarter of the NBA Finals against Dallas. You know, I'm sitting there going like this. Everybody was coming at me and, you know, he and I weren't talking. 
and people were looking at me saying, you know, well, you got to understand. I was like, no, I don't. Because you're usually complimentary about somebody. He didn't perform well in the NBA Finals in the fourth quarter. I pointed that out. What's the problem? Let's be big boys about it grow up. They said, no. What he was going through at that particular time, when you consider the weight of the world that's on this man's shoulders, you have to take that into consideration. You can't just shove that aside and discuss stuff in a vacuum and act like there are other ancillary things, other things on the periphery that isn't having a profound effect I, I on somebody's life. I don't think people life. understand. And that's what they were saying. His family also. Yeah. Um, his first year in Miami, he was miserable because his family didn't come to Miami with him. His now wife, Savannah, and his two sons lived in Akron. They yeah. did not want to come. And, and part of his transition was to say, hey, listen, I need my family here in Miami. And you yes. know what? He had to make a deal. He had to get married, which he did. Yep. And her parents got to move down and live with them uh -huh. for a while in Miami That's with right. their boys. Yes, they did. He made a deal to get them down there because he knew that was important. So that goes into But nobody knew that. Too. Nobody knew that at the time. Right. Because to know LeBron, you don't want to hurt the dude. Did you appreciate his skills, but you also appreciate his commitment to excellence, his dedication, et cetera, et cetera. Nobody that's halfway decent should want to hurt this dude. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You root for him. But at the end of the day, you got to call it like you see it. And against Dallas, he came up small. Ever since that, he's been nothing but large. Tired of faded bumpers, foggy headlights, weathered, sun-damaged vehicles? You've spent time and money applying product again and again to hide those embarrassing parts on your car, only to have that work fade away. Not anymore. Introducing Wipe New, the world's longest-lasting solution for restoring and protecting